Hi everyone, this is Dr. Kingston, and in this video I'll be discussing the osteology of the orbit. The objectives for this video are to identify the bones that form the orbit, along with the major foramina, fissures, and fossae associated with them. And then we'll discuss the structures that are associated with those. The walls of the orbit, as you can see in these images here, are formed by multiple cranial bones, seven of them in fact. So let's walk through them. The superior wall, or the roof, is formed by the frontal bone. Posteriorly, and contributing a little bit to the floor and the, back, and the superior portion of the back wall, is the sphenoid bone. The medial wall is formed primarily by the maxilla, but also gets contributions from the lacrimal bone, the ethmoid bone, and a teeny tiny little bit of the palatine bone. Inferiorly, the floor of the orbit is made up mostly by that maxilla, but also by the zygomatic bone and a little bit of that palatine again. The lateral wall is formed almost entirely by the zygomatic bone with a little bit of a contribution from the sphenoid. All of those bones provide solid protection for the eye. But in order for that eye to function properly, there needs to be some passageways here for neurovasculature and for lacrimal fluid to travel in and out of the orbit. So let's take a look at some of these pathways. The optic canal is this large round opening in the posterior wall of the orbit. It transmits the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery. The superior orbital fissure is this long, irregular shaped opening on the posterior wall. Its size is kind of a testament to the number of structures that pass through it. So here we have cranial nerves 3, 4, the ophthalmic division of 5, and number 6 passing into the orbit along with the superior ophthalmic vein. All right. If we follow this lowest point of the superior orbital fissure inferiorly, we find the inferior orbital fissure in pretty close approximation. This fissure opens from the floor of the orbit and it transmits branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. So that's the infraorbital nerve and zygomatic nerve. The infraorbital artery and vein will also pass through here, traveling with the nerve. So unlike most of the structures passing through these foramina here, the infraorbiter, infraorbital nerve, artery, and vein are going to continue anteriorly into the maxilla and will eventually come out on the face rather than staying in the orbit. On the medial wall here, we find the ethmoid foramina, both anterior and posterior. These are going to transmit the anterior and posterior ethmoid neurovasculature from the orbit into the nasal cavity. And finally, in the inferior medial corner of the orbit, we find a depression called the lacrimal fossa. This is home to the lacrimal sac, uh, which collects lacrimal fluid that's been used to moisten the surface of the eye. And as we're gonna see in future videos, it shunts that lacrimal fluid then through a series of ducts and into the na nasal cavity.